I'm joined by Dave Drynan, who was a financial advisor for over three decades, and now he's reinvented himself and is a resident at the Whistler Museum in Lowell. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. What a beautiful space you have Fabulous here. Fabulous space. The lighting is, is spectacular. It has a European flavor. It's probably one of the best studio places uh, uh, in, in all of Lowell. So what does it mean to be a resident in the Whistler Museum? Well, I'm a full-time painter. Usually an artist in residence is to, is to have their working studio in, in, a, in a space within the museum. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, work with the uh, Youth Summer Arts Program for the children. I'm going to be helping out on that. I'm also an ambassador, if you will, for not just the Whistler House, but the Lowell Arts in general. And this is where I do my work, although I do a lot of plein air painting outdoors. And if I do plein air painting outdoors, I usually, the paintings 80, 70, 80 percent finish, I finish them up here in the studio. So I'm also, uh, my studio here is part of the tour when people visit the Whistler House because people really like to see what it's like to be in a working artist studio. And I just love that because I'm able to meet a lot of interesting and different people. When I put things in perspective, and I stepped back of where I was two year, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. It's just, yeah. And uh, it's, it's just kind of interesting. I mean, when I had this vision of coming up to Lowell to paint and leaving my other career, I had this vision, like, I just wanted to be just peace and paint. But I can't help myself. It's, it's just things happen because I just love talking about my art. I love people coming into my studio. And uh, I love just uh, trying to help the other artists that are in this community and raise the vis visibility uh, of the visual arts in Lowell. This is called First Snow Merrimack Street, uh, which is Merrimack Street, downtown Lowell. Uh, a little over a year ago, uh, they had a call for artists to submit work that would be, if it was chosen, it would hang in City Hall in the City Council Chambers on the second floor. So I, uh, I wanted to create something that would kind of show some, convey some of the characteristics of Lowell. And what happened, I was out one day doing sketches, taking my own photographs so that I could work on the piece when I got in my studio. The day, it just so happened that I was out there, don't you know, it's like snowing out. It's like a wet, heavy snow. So I get in my studio, now what am I gonna do? Well, it was snowing out, why don't I do that? Uh, the student, if you will, in the yellow with the backpack represents the student population in Lowell, University of Lowell and Middlesex Community College. The woman pushing the baby carriage represents a lot of hardworking women in this city. And the other person facing us represents the diverse culture in the city that Lowell has. The building to the left is kind of interesting because there's a couple things about that. That's old City Hall, but it's actually the headquarters of Enterprise Bank. Now, Enterprise Bank was started in Lowell in the early 80s by the Duncan family from Lowell, still, still live in Lowell, and they are very uh, the supporters of, uh, of, of art in the city of Lowell. But I wanted to have that building in there. That represents business and commerce. And then the building in the background, that is City Hall. And that represents city government. And that's, again, where the original painting hangs. And the brick building to the right, that is one of the gatehouses for the historic canal history that Lowell has. So I brought some <coughs> of those characteristics in to show the resilience of people mm. and the vibrance of people out in Lowell in a kind of a messy day. So what I find fascinating uh, listening mm -hmm. to you is that with each picture, you tell a story and also preserve the rich history of the area. So it's not just a pretty picture. There's really a story and a history behind it. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of thought that goes into it uh, is, is, is because those people were not in the photograph but when I was sketching, mm -hmm. I kind of implanted them. That's called Dana's Luncheonette. Now, when I leave the studio, when I drive home, there's a traffic uh, light there and frequently I'd be stuck at the red light and I'd look over across and there's this fascinating building called Dana's Luncheonette and it was just drawn to me. Uh, it, it turns out there's a lot of history there that I didn't even know. I was just drawn to the to the building. It dates back to 1916. So I painted that over the summer. 
I was across the street. It was in dead of July heat, and I had to do it over two mornings because that was, the light was just right in the morning. And when I was painting, there were people that would stop at the traffic light, mm -hmm. roll down their window because they had the air conditioning on. Wow, do you know the history of that building? No, tell me. I had people walking up to me. Do you know the history of that building? Well, as it turns out, it was featured in the 1992 movie called School Ties with Ben Affleck and uh, Matt Damon, early part mm -hmm. of their career. And uh, it was, they had, two, uh, if you Google it, uh, Dana's Luncheonette movie, it'll come up. And there were two scenes. There was one inside and one pretty much right where I was painting. So these are things that just happen when I'm out there painting. Uh, it's usually, I won't know the history sometimes, but I'll just be drawn to the architecture, mm. or there'll be something out about it that draws me to paint it. So typically I will paint outdoors. Now typically I paint basically, not exclusively, but downtown Lowell. But I also paint quite a bit in Agunquit and in Cape Ann, Gloucester and Rockport area. Uh, I will do some painting. I'll, I'll be in Pemaquid, Maine uh, and this come in October with a group of artists. I'm an oil painter, although I do some watercolor, but everything that you see here is oil. How do you time the light perfectly? Well, that's a good question because that's one of the challenges of being a plein air painter. Uh, so it's very difficult to work on large pieces. Um, so I typically a 16 by 20 might be the largest piece I do outdoors. And like I was explaining on Dana's Luncheonette, I did that over two days because I, I worked like from eight until noon because that particular way that was located, the light was just right. Typically, as the best, if, if I find a scene that I like and it is directly facing north and I have an app on my phone, <laughs> technology, that's a compass, because sometimes I'm in an area I'm not as familiar with, I pull out my compass, okay, that's north. That's perfect light because it's, if I'm facing a scene that's east-west, it's gonna be more dramatic change in the light that gets on my canvas and it's, it's, sometimes the scene you want is east or west and you just have to go with it and improvise. And what you do is you estimate that I'm probably gonna be painting here for four, three or four hours. I have to would pull out my compass and just kind of guess, estimate what the mm -hmm. light is going to be. And what I have to do is make a decision. Maybe I'm an hour into that painting. This is the light I want. And then this is what I'm going to have to stick with. And what I'll do is I'll get out my iPad and I'll take a few photos that I can have reference pieces when I finish the painting in the studio. I'll do some thumbnail sketches called value sketches, which is on a small piece of paper, just almost like a cartoon of what I'm doing. Maybe it takes me two or three minutes and I'll just do some quick shades to remind myself this is the light that I want to capture. So do you work on one painting at a time and how long does it take you to Good get? Good question. Uh, I work probably on three or four pieces at once. Uh, it depends on how I feel when I come into the studio or if I'm even working something in the studio and I see the weather forecast for the <laughs> next day, it's going to be a beautiful day. I want to venture up to a gun court and get right on the marginal way or up on the beach or what have you and paint. So really, I like to have three or four things going at once because I never know how I'm going to feel when I come in what I really feel like working on. And how long it takes. People ask me that. I really have never, I don't even want to know sometimes <laughs> and really figure it out. Uh, example, Dana's Luncheonette, that's an 11 by 14. You know, that took me seven, eight hours to do wow. over two days. And then the, the one thing all of us artists struggle with is when is a painting finished? When is mm. it finished? You just never, you, I, sometimes I think a painting's finished, I'll hang it on the wall, I like to live with it for a while, I'll even bring it home with me, set it up while I'm having breakfast and look at it, look at it as I do my chores around the house, bring it back in and I may see something a month, two months, three months later with a fresh eye that I didn't see before, huh? and I'll pull it down off the wall and, and touch it up. And, and sometimes you can make mistakes and sometimes you can overwork a piece. So it's something we all struggle with as artists. <laughs> when is it done? Eventually you have to make a decision, enough is enough. So. Okay, so the big question for me, you were a financial advisor for many years. Right, right. And then, if you retire and three years ago you decide uh, to go yeah. into art. Did you go yeah. to school for it? Did you teach yourself? Yeah. How did yeah. it all come about? Well, I come from a family uh, of uh, creative people. I'm one of nine. 
My mother was a painter. She didn't have much time to cultivate her work because she was bringing up, she and my father bringing up nine kids. Uh, my father was a photo engraver, did a lot of etching, worked with his hands. So I had two parents that were very creative. Uh, we grew up in a family, I guess you'd call it economically challenged, but we never felt a want for anything. But we were always encouraged uh, to appreciate the visual arts, uh, probably because of my mother and father uh, with, with their talents. Um, so as a, as a child, I painted and, and, and would draw quite a bit. And I actually entered shows and sold paintings here and there when I was in junior high all the way up through high school. Uh, then I get into college, I get away from it. Uh, it. Turns out, you know, I get married, have a child, ended up in the business world. But even all throughout my career as a financial advisor, whenever my wife and I and daughter would travel, I'd have a sketchbook. Yeah. I always would bring my, I'd bring my watercolors with me, even if we were traveling away somewhere, because they're easy to carry. You won't want to bring oil paints with you, it's more laborious, or whatever. So uh, I always had a sketchbook handy. And it was one of those things that, uh, uh, you know, you get into life and always think, well, someday maybe I'll get back into that. And what happened, it was about 12 years ago, um, I thought, well, you know what, maybe I'll just take a, drawing course, and I did it, uh, a local drawing course at, at, Andover, uh, at Andover High School through um, the adult education, and, uh, and I took a drawing course, and that was the beginning. And I had no plans on retiring early from my financial career. I had no vision of what's happened with me here. Uh, what happened is I ended up taking some courses at, at, at the Essex Arts Center in Lawrence, I found my way to the New Hampshire Institute of Art in Manchester. Started going nights, weekends, and I went through a program there part-time. Because I had a client of mine that I did business with, an artist by the name of Carlton Plummer. Uh, he's a, a Booth Bay Harbor artist, uh, American Watercolor Society, fabulous painter. And I would go up and review his portfolio and talk to him. And, and what would end up happening is we'd spend about 45 minutes reviewing his portfolio in another three hours talking art. Wow. His was there. So uh, he, was, he, he was very supportive after a while. We get talking about it that maybe I will, he said, I, he said, it'll add 20 years to your life. He says, I don't want to lose you as a financial <laughs> advisor, but I'd be thrilled if you ever did this. I don't like to say I'm retired. I had a career change. Yeah, you're not career retired. Change. No, no, <laughs> career change. But I left the financial service world, which I love, and I had great relationships with people, what have you. Uh, but I probably left there five to eight years, maybe even 10 years sooner than I would have if I didn't have this passion for the art. Probably not the most economical. Uh, as a financial advisor, if I had one of my clients come to me and say, this is what I want to do, I said, no, no, what are you doing that for? That's crazy. But add 20 years but, to your well, life. That's right, but I feel life is too short. I don't want to be in my 70s or 80s and looking back and say, why didn't I do this? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of evolved and took on a life of its own. And then what happened uh, was in uh, the uh, last fall, uh, it was November or so, uh, Sarah Bogosian, the executive director of the Whistler House, uh, uh, asked me if they wanted to have a meeting with me with some of the board members and asked me if there was if they had an opening for an artist in residence. Would they had to want to have a conversation? Is there any level of interest on my part? Which Were you I was jumping totally, up and down? I was totally <laughs> shocked. Totally shocked. Uh, well, actually, I, I had this newfound freedom now, so I wasn't sure. But it's we we worked it all out, and it's just been a perfect marriage, I think, for all of us. And I'm thrilled to be here. So it's an awesome story, Dave. Yeah, awesome yeah. story of new beginnings and creating beautiful art. Thank you for what you do. It's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Sarah Bogosian is the executive director and president here at the Whistler House. And I got to tell you, stunned at this collection that you have here. Beautiful pieces of art. Tell me a little bit about the Whistler Museum. Well, the Whistler House, uh, the building itself uh, was built in 1823. We are the birthplace of James McNeil Whistler. That's why we were so famous. He is one of America's premier artists and he painted Whistler's Mother, which is one of the most uh, popular paintings in the world. How did you break Dave Drynan to be your resident artist? Well, that, that's a funny story. Um, we had an exhibition of um, art in the park 
we have a beautiful park adjacent to the Whistler House Museum of Art. And one day he was out there painting and he just asked about the artist in resident program, never thinking that there was any future for him here. Uh, but a couple of months later, it was about four months later, our artist in resident at the time was planning on leaving. And I thought of him. So I called him up and I said, I'd love to meet with you. He came over, he was very engaging, um, a real promoter not only of art, but the Whistler House, the community, uh, Western Ave Studios, which is also another wonderful organization here in the city. Um, and so I asked him, I, I said, what would you think about it? And he was stunned, he was thrilled. And he thought about it and had a few questions and then came back to us and said, yes, he'd love to do it and we have been uh, just overwhelmed, honestly. I, I don't want to. Uh, I'm joyful over the fact that he's here because he's a great promoter for not just us. Uh, people come in, visitors love him. He loves to talk about his art, he loves to talk about art in general, and about this wonderful art community in Lowell. And of course, the Whistler House, that's the um, added bonus for us. So Awesome, yes. awesome. Thank you, Sarah.